In this video, we're going to be covering why your wisdom tooth might need to be removed, what the procedure involves, and what to do to help with your recovery. But first of all, what is a wisdom tooth? Well, wisdom teeth develop later than other teeth. They usually start coming through into your mouth in your teens or your early 20s, but they can cause problems at any age. Now, you might need to have wisdom teeth removed if they don't have enough space to come through into your mouth fully. So, for example, they might be blocked by another tooth, which is also known as impaction, or they can be partly covered by your gums. Now, this can cause a range of things, including pain and swelling, infections in your gums, food getting stuck, tooth decay, gum disease, and a buildup of fluid around the tooth known as a cyst or even a dental abscess. And I've made another video on the channel about dental abscesses if you're interested. Now, a dentist might do x-rays to check how your wisdom teeth are positioned. If it's not causing problems, the tooth will usually be left where it is and monitored at your routine dental checkups. But sometimes a wisdom tooth needs to be removed. So let's cover what happens during this procedure. So a dentist might be able to remove a wisdom tooth or they might refer you to a specialist at a hospital, clinic or another dental surgery. Now you'll usually have a local anaesthetic injection to numb the gum so you'll not feel any pain. You might also have sedation to help you feel relaxed or you might have something called a general anaesthetic where you're asleep. Now you'll only need these if the teeth are more difficult to remove or you're very anxious. Now the main steps to remove wisdom teeth are as follows. First of all, the dentist or the surgeon carrying out the procedure will cut your gum if it's covering the tooth. Next, they'll widen the socket where the tooth fits into your gum. The tooth will then be removed in one piece or cut into two or three pieces to make it easier to remove. Your gum is then stitched if necessary using dissolvable stitches. Now it often takes just a few minutes and it should take no more than 40 minutes, but obviously this is going to vary from person to person. You'll usually go home on the same day, but if you've had the general anaesthetic where you've been put to sleep, you might need to stay in hospital overnight. Now, once you've had a wisdom tooth removed, what do you need to know about recovering from wisdom tooth removal? Well, let's go into that now. Well, the good news is that you can usually go back to your normal activities the day after having a wisdom tooth removed. If they were more difficult to remove or you had a general anaesthetic, you might need to take one to three days off work. Now, for up to two weeks after having wisdom teeth removed, you'll usually have some pain and swelling, which should start to improve after one to two days. You might also have bruising on your cheek, your jaw might be sore and stiff, and you might find chewing and swallowing uncomfortable. Now, if you had stitches, they usually will dissolve by themselves and a blood clot will form over the wound, and this helps it to heal. You'll also be given advice about things to do for the first few days to help your recovery by the dentist or surgeon who's carried out the procedure. Now, in terms of five things to do, make sure that you take paracetamol or ibuprofen to help with the pain and follow the instructions on the packet. Next, eat soft or liquid food until you can chew more comfortably. Thirdly, keep the wound clean by rinsing gently with mouthwash or warm salt water. Fourthly, clean your other teeth carefully, avoiding the affected area so you don't damage your stitches or the blood clot that is over the wound. And finally, if you get bleeding, press the area for at least 10 minutes with a clean cloth or piece of cotton wool. Now, there are some important things that you should also avoid. So firstly, don't drive for 48 hours after a general anaesthetic or for 24 hours after a sedative injection. And finally, don't eat hard or crunchy food or food that can get stuck in the wound, such as nuts and seeds. It's also important not to smoke because smoking can increase the risk of infection and don't drink alcohol or very hot drinks. And again, this is to reduce the risk of bleeding or scalding. Now, wisdom tooth removal is usually a simple and it's also a common procedure, but like any other procedure, complications can happen and your dentist or surgeon should explain the risks to you before the procedure. But in general, complications can include a dry socket, which is a painful condition where the blood clot that forms over the tooth socket doesn't form properly or it's dislodged before your gum has healed. You might also get an infection, which might need to be treated with antibiotics. And you might also get damage to nerves, 
close to the tooth, causing numbness or tingling in your tongue, lips and chin. But this usually gets better, however it can last for a few weeks or months. If it is persisting for this longer amount of time, then it's worth speaking to your dentist or surgeon. Now if you notice any of the following things following your wisdom tooth removal, it's important to seek urgent advice from your dentist or health professional. And these include if you've got bleeding that doesn't stop, you've got pain and swelling that's severe or getting worse and painkillers are not helping, if you've got pain with a bad taste in your mouth, high temperature, or you're generally feeling unwell.